welcome to another vlog, this time covering quite a span of time. There's been uh, several events going on, uh, starting with the weekend just gone was the Autumn Mini Beer and Pretzels event, which is Spirit Games' counterpart to their main summer event at Burton Town Hall. Uh, it was held at the Three Queens Hotel, which is just across the road from the shop, and is weird. <laughs> I mean, it was a nice enough place, um, but it's kind of quite a rambling building. It's certain bits of it, they've taken areas between buildings and just roofed across them, so certain areas are technically outdoors, like you're, you're sat in the alleyway, but it's now got a roof. It's really weird. Um, but we commandeered a, what looked like a conference table with some really nice fancy chairs. Uh, the only downside was because it's a hotel, all of the different rooms were very scattered and very kind of bits and pieces, so we didn't actually see that much of people. Um, but we did get some good days gaming in. Um, we only went for the Saturday. No, couldn't stay for the Sunday, couldn't get both days off work. Um, we got a lift up with a friend of mine who was fantastic and gave us a lift out there for uh, the cost of a drink and parking, which was great. Uh, yeah, it was a good time, although we did have one rather catastrophic moment um, where the roof was leaking and we didn't know the roof was leaking and didn't notice until a long time afterwards that uh, one of the game bags had started to fill up with water. Thankfully, none of the actual game components were damaged, but the Game of Thrones box uh, that Johnny had kind of came off pretty badly. But, knowing uh, Fancy Flight Games customer service as I do, they, they're probably going to send out a replacement. They tend to be very, very good at these things. So hopefully all is not lost. And like I say, the game itself survived. Um, Games-wise, what did we play? Uh, we played Gears of War. So we have another convert to that. Um, had a really easy time of it though, it was weird. Usually we get kind of massacred in the first room, but it's a funny one. The first mission, if you survive the first room, it's it can be a bit of a cakewalk sometimes. And we, we had quite an easy time, but we did have to sort of use our brains. We didn't just kind of wander through it. We, we did make some very, very solid sort of tactical choices. Um, yeah, so really enjoyed that. That was the one of the sort of later games of the day. Uh, a large portion of the day was taken up playing Archipelago, uh, which was a bit of an unusual one for me, because the designer of that had also done uh, Earth Reborn, which I'm really interested in, and it seemed like a complete departure. Um, Archipelago is a funny one, because it's sort of semi-co-op. Uh, one person wins, uh, or everybody can lose as well. A um, little bit like Chaos in the Old World, where it's entirely possible for the game to win and none of the players. Now, we only played the short game, and bear that in mind because I think the short playing the short game is the main uh, kind of root of my criticisms. Because I, I didn't really get on with it. I like the idea. I like how it plays but I really don't like the victory conditions and the scoring, and I, I don't like what I feel are certain dead ends that you get to in the game. Because um, the way it works is each of you has sort of a hidden agenda, but those agenda cards have a condition for the game ending and a sort of secret scoring condition, but that, that applies to everyone. So it's not like you're trying to pursue your own personal agenda as much as, you know, you're sort of... You know what's on the table, and you know what's in your hand, but at the same time, everybody else will score it. So, if it's something that everybody else does by chance, they'll score your card anyway. It's weird, because you you kind of can't work towards a goal that well. Um, I mean, the goal we had was, the main goal for everybody, was to get stone. But, if you don't use any stone, then it's just the first person to be lucky enough to be near stone and to stockpile it will win that condition. It's it's just random. <laughs> it's silly. Um, and then the condition cards themselves, the, the, the victory condition cards, were sort of odd. I mean, mine was to build markets, and the most markets sort of wins. Um, or wins some points, anyway. And I built two, and Sarah built one, and so we got first and second place. And just because nobody else decided to build a market, they didn't score my card. It it just feels really arbitrary. I do suspect with a longer game you'd have more chance to try and, sort of like with Ankh Morpork, figure out what everybody else's goals are and try and pursue them, but in the short game there's no time. 
And like I say, you get these funny dead ends. Like, like I say, when the stone resources run out. No, you don't. Not this time. Just avoiding a cat quake there of Missy knocking the camera. Um, yeah, when, when the stone runs out, unless the person who's got it spends it and, and uses it to... Stop it, you. Come on. Off you go. Uses it to, say, build something, it will never go back to the supply. It's, you know, it, it's, it's frustrating. There's, you know, if, if somebody keeps hold of it, it's tough luck to everybody else. And it, it just felt like it had lots of little niggles, but the actual idea of it's good. And I'm withholding judgment until I play at least the medium length game or the longer game, because the short game, I can understand it's there to teach you how to play it, but it just felt like it didn't really work. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I got to play a game of Grind, which is Ace, a uh, two-player, five-a-side, steam-powered robot football and wrestling. We played only half of it, sort of just, just five turns, because the rulebook is terrible and it took me ages to get my head back into how it all worked. But once we got playing, I really enjoyed it. It's It's got a complex rule set, perhaps unnecessarily complex. Definitely you can tell it's come from a war games background. But when you actually get into the play, it is very satisfying. Uh, you feel like you can cleverly set up blocking and you can sort of execute quite decent strategies. Um, so yeah, I'll have to play that again. I'd, I'd forgotten how much fun I have with that game. It's a shame it really did quite badly. Uh, I imagine these days with um, Dreadball being out, there's not really anybody going to pick it up. But it's a, it, it's it's kind of unfortunate. I think if, if it's on sale, it's worth a punt. Um, what else did we play? We played a game of uh, Cthulhu Gloom, which initially I thought was a stupid re-theme. Um, but it's actually a far superior version of the game. Uh, the original Gloom, I felt, had far too many instances of having a hand of crappy cards that you just threw away. And Cthulhu Gloom seems to make more sense. The cards tend to be more double-edged swords that, um, you know, you can use them and they're powerful, but they'll harm you or they'll benefit the other player when you're trying to harm them. It's a much more interesting game and it works really well and we had a lot of fun with that one. Um, so, yeah, still still keen on that. Forgotten how much I enjoy it. Um, seems to be a running theme. Oh, what else? Kingdom Builder, of course, because <laughs> we always now play Kingdom Builder, it seems. I'm going to have to be a bit careful I don't get burned out on that one. Uh, I don't want to play it so much that I, I get bored with it. Um, oh, what else? So, yeah, fantastic, and I am really, really sort of couldn't be more happy that uh, Spirit Games put on two of these a year now. Uh, the shop seems to do pretty well out of it, which is great. Um, and once again, I would recommend you take a look at least at their website um, and the upcoming events. So then there was the Monday <laughs> at uh, the New Zealand Arms Pub in Derby, which is the one we've, we've kind of run every week, uh, which has now taken on a life of its own, and that's fantastic news. Um, again... Kingdom Builder, and we played Mission Red Planet, which I love to pieces. Uh, it's a, a nice area control with action selection. I did better than I thought I would, um, but I missed a trick so badly. I'd, I'd got three astronauts on a ship, and I hadn't considered... I had the choice of two ships to launch, and I hadn't considered that somebody might have the saboteur, and in the next turn, Sarah blew up the ship and killed all three guys. It was just... Oh. Painful, but it was a very well timed saboteur, so can't be too mad about it. I didn't do so well on that, but never mind, I'm always happy for another game. Um, I do sometimes wonder if the bonus cards are a little out of whack, though. Some of them seem to be really difficult, and others seem to be really easy, but never mind. Um, so, yeah, Mission Red Planet, always, always entertaining. Never had a bad game of it. Uh, hmm. Can't remember what else. We did play Unspeakable Words a couple of weeks back, which uh, I don't know. It's not much game to it, but it's a good laugh if you play with the extra variant rules and have a bit more, a bit more to it. It's a lot of fun um, for just a quick sort of word play card game. Um, then we had Thursday. Oh, this cat here. This is Missy Cat. She doesn't like being on camera because it means she's been caught doing things she doesn't isn't supposed to. But she's going to sit with me for a minute because she's busy rustling around. Okay, you stay there. So then we had Thursday, uh, the beer and pretzel, not beer and pretzel, what am I about? D6 plus beer, our monthly event on the third Thursday at the Furnace Inn, uh, who are, as always,
always very accommodating. Um, this was our 17th, um, 17th event. And again, it seems to be taking on a life of its own, which is good because obviously it's not long now until, you know, our child's going to be born and that's kind of going to make things difficult. But I'm hoping and expecting and now quite happy to think that it is the case that the event is going to continue in our absence. Um, and so when we come back to it in a few months time, uh, hopefully then it'll still be just the same and people will be enjoying it uh, while we're not there. Um, so again, Kingdom Builder, of course. Uh, we dug out Quarriers again. I haven't played Quarriers in ages. I've totally forgotten how to play it. Um, such a frustrating game though. It's, it's, it's like a really good game system with not enough attention pay, paid to the balance and the cards. It feels like if you bought all the expansions, you could cull down the cards to have one really good set, but they just seem really sometimes very unbalanced when the cards come out. There's certain ones that nobody buys, there's certain ones that people want to buy immediately. You know, you feel like I got a good kind of game engine running, I got a good sort of dice, dice pull running, but my monsters just weren't powerful enough, I should have fed some better ones in. I think if you play with advanced rules, it changes everything and it does make it better, but we were just playing the basic rules to get the game sort of back again. It was a, it was fun, but it, I don't know, it feels like they never put enough work into that game. And the expansions, none of the expansions seem to relate to any of the others, and it, it's like, it's just been handled so badly. Um, then you've got the Lord of the Rings version, and soon there's going to be, I think, a Marvel version, probably, coming out. Some superhero-themed Quarriers dice-building game, same thing, different, different pictures, I guess. Um, so yeah, it was good to play Quarriers again. I have to, I have to pick that up again as another sort of entry into the into the evening or last game of the evening type thing. Um, yes, we played Suro on Monday. Sarah had not played it before, and it's inspired us probably to pick up Suro of the Seas for a, a bit of a blast because that one's a lot prettier. <laughs> um, what else did we play on the Thursday? We played ah, Android Infiltration. Um, a card game which I like a lot. It's it's push your luck. You're supposed to be invading this building to download data and steal data from it. It's really cool. You kind of you're pushing your luck against the game because there's a timer that goes down, but you're also pushing your luck against the other players and trying to nobble them while you kind of escape with all the data. I have one problem with it, and it's the same problem really I have with Blood Bowl Team Manager, and they're both fantasy flight games, which is the tokens are worth between one and three points. Now I understand if it was deterministic and all your data tokens were worth one point, it would be kind of dull unless you kept them secret. But the problem with having them between one and three points is that you can get like a big stack of these data tokens, but if you get all ones and somebody else gets a load of threes, then they may not have played as well as you, but they'll still win. And that sucks. Um, I have discussed uh, with my friend Adrian, who owns the game that we played, uh, a few variants, and one that came out of Board Game Geek has definitely got my attention, which is that when you go into the room, you take the data tokens and you put them in the room as normal, but you have to take the one point tokens first, then the two points, and then the three points. So the longer you stay in a room, or the further down the stack it goes, the more lucrative it gets, which seems really cool because that means that if you're just hitting and running each room, uh, you'll only be grabbing ones, but if you stay there and, and go at it for a bit, you'll be grabbing threes. Or, if you come in opportunistically and grab the last tokens, then you'll be getting the higher point ones. And it kind of makes a bit of balance and gives a bit more strategy and stops you just getting a random score at the end of the game, which frustrates the absolute hell out of me in, in what is otherwise a game I think is a lot of fun. Although, interestingly, one review pointed out something that I totally agree with, which is that the Android universe is too po-faced for how much fun the game is. <laughs> it's like the game feels too... sort of slightly daft and chaotic and, and entertaining and stabbing in the back type game, and the Android universe is a very cold, clinical, serious-seeming setting for it. They, they jar quite nastily. But the, game's, the game itself is still a lot of fun. Um... So yeah, all of this stuff going on. In terms of sort of new games and, and stuff that's going on in the world of gaming, I can't say there's been a lot that's uh, grabbed my attention recently. Um, at the moment, I'm just trying to get some games played that I already own. Next up, I'd like to get Rallyman 
played and Defense of the Realm needs to hit the table again. Uh, a great game with really irritating board. Um, apart from that, not sure what else there is to say. I still haven't got a decent game of X-Wing in. Um, <laughs> I'm still sort of umming and ahhing about whether to try and pick up Planet Steam eventually. Oh, that's something. Uh, big thanks to Edition de Matigo for sending me out the replacement headdresses for Giants. In my review I mentioned that the headdress pieces don't fit very well. I emailed them and they sent me replacements straight away and they are lots better. So if you own a copy of that game or are thinking of buying it, that is one component issue that you can write off completely. It can get it fixed, which is great. Um, next review I'm going to be doing will be Spartacus and probably the expansion as well. Won't be gaming again till Monday, and I'm going to see if I can get something different to the table. In the meantime, uh, I hope everybody's doing well, and I will see you soon.